Alright, so in this video, we're going to look at a force time graph and identify how it affects the momentum. So, let's say we have this graph here, and as you can see, it's a force time graph because force in newtons is graphed along the y-axis and time in seconds is graphed along the x-axis. And we're given this information. The graph shows how a force acts on a 7 kilogram object that is initially moving at 15 meters per second at time equals 0 seconds. So here are our three questions. What is the initial momentum of the object? What is the impulse after 5 seconds? And what is the velocity after 5 seconds? Right? So I'll put these off to the side. So our first question is, what's the initial momentum? So what we can do is we can take the information provided in the little info thing and use the equation for impulse which is force times change in time equals mass times uh, change in velocity both sides of this equal impulse so we can pick a side and plug in what we know so here I'm seeing a mass and a velocity so I think we can use this side of the equation so our impulse would be Rather, sign for impulse is P, is 7 kilograms times 15 meters per second, which equals, which equals 105 kilograms times meters per second. Alright, so that's the answer to A, what is the initial momentum of the object. So now, if we want to find the impulse after 5 seconds, we're going to use the graph that was provided, right? So, let's just move some stuff around. So, impulse, also known as change in momentum, can be represented in a graph, such as this one. So, right here, we want to see the impulse after 5 seconds. So, like I said before, impulse is also force times change in time, right? So what we have here is we have force and we have time. So what we can do is we can find the area underneath the curve and that will be our impulse, right? So what we do is we draw some shapes. So here we could draw... We could draw... a triangle and a rectangle. So here our uh, area would be 4, 4 times 4 times 1 half because it's a triangle, so it would be 8. And then here we have 1 times 4, so 4. Alright, so that means that 8 plus 4, 12, is our impulse, 12 uh, newtons times uh, seconds, right? That's the uh, proper unit of measure for uh, impulse when you're using force and time, right? So now it asks for the velocity after five seconds. So what we do is we take this impulse, we set it equal to the other side, we set it equal to mass times change in velocity, and then we use our original velocity to solve for the final velocity. So, so we found one side of the equation. This is 12 newton times seconds equals mass. Our mass is still 7, 7 uh, kilograms. And then our change in velocity. We can rewrite change in velocity as v final minus v initial. Now, we know what V initial is, right? It tells us in the problem. It tells us 15 second or 15 meters per second. So, what we can do is we can distribute this 7 and multiply uh, velocity final times 7 and 15 times 7. Simplify things out. Let me just erase this. Equals 7. I'll just drop the units. 7 times velocity final minus um, 105. Alright, and then we add to the other side, 
we get uh, 117 equals 7 times v final. Then we divide by 7. This number divided by 7. And we get, whoop, we get v final equals 16.714 meters per second. And now, the first thing I like to do after I've solved the problem is I like to figure out if this makes sense, right? So I look at the uh, impulse, and if the impulse is positive, you know that your, um, your velocity should increase, right? But if this graph had been below the x-axis, you know that your impulse would be negative, so your velocity would be smaller, right? So that is how you solve these force time graph problems. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty uh, easy to do once you figure out your area underneath the curve. Ooh, it's the end screen. Click on one of these links to be directed to that playlist. And don't forget to subscribe!